Today's scripture comes from New Testament, Book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 30 to 37. As I read through the passage, I hope we can all hear the voice of the living God. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him up, and went off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, but when he saw the injured man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came up to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling came to where the injured man was, and when he saw him, he felt compassion for him. He went up to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring olive oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever else you spend, I will repay you when I come back this way. Which of these three do you think became a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in religious law said, The one who showed mercy to him. So Jesus said to him, Go and do the same. Amen. I am sure that today's scripture is familiar to many of Christians and even to non-believers. It is about the parable of the Good Samaritan. And let me share with you a brief story about um, this incident to recall your memory. One day, Jesus was approached by an expert in religious law, and he asked Jesus a question to test him. And he asked, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How do you understand it? And the expert answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But the expert, uh, he wanted to justify himself and said to the Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, um, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him up, and went off, leaving him half dead. And uh, the a priest uh, was passing by, and a Levite also passed by. They saw him, but they never uh, they approached him to help. But a Samaritan um, the, was uh, traveling uh, the road, but he was very willing to help the injured man, and he was very. He had a compassion, compassion for him, so he took him to inn and then looked after him. And our Lord uh, asked the expert, "Who do you think the true neighbor uh, is?" And the expert in religious law said, "The one who showed mercy to him." So our Jesus said to him, "Go and do the same." And the parable of the Good Samaritan uh, told by Jesus inspired a lot of people and motivated them to live like a Good Samaritan. And the name Samaritan also became a a synonym for charity works and those who perform and the good deeds. And individual wise and there are quite a lot of people who committed themselves who really committed their life uh, to be uh, to live like a good Samaritan and 
I am sure that you are quite familiar with this the mainstream uh, story of the Good Samaritan. But uh, today, I would like to draw your attention to less the focused uh, aspect or character of uh, this uh, story. So uh, what I mean by that is, why did our Lord Jesus choose a Samaritan as an exemplary good guy for this uh, parable? And why not Arabian merchants? He could have uh, traveled uh, the road, and he could have helped um, the injured man. And in fact, the Samaritans were originated from the same family line from the Hebrews and Israelites, but uh, they were being pushed aside and looked down by their own people. And with that in mind, why did Jesus choose Samaritan as an exemplary hero of this incident? And second, um, there is another question uh, which we often on times pay, pay less attention to. Who was the man who fell into the hands of robbers on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho? From the parable, there is no way for us to identify who the victim of the robbery was. And even if so, I named the title of today's sermon, Who Was the Man Being Robbed? And the reason uh, I did so is that I wanted to focus on the somewhat less uh, the, the focused character and also find more of uh, what our Lord would like to tell us uh, through this parable. Before searching for the answer to this question, please allow me to remind you one story uh, in the Old Testament. And I would like to set uh, the New and Old Testament passage side by side and compare them uh, because the two texts I'm about to compare share a lot of commonalities. And there are also several keywords that appear in the both of the texts. And so let me uh, the, tell you some more about uh, this. And it is assumed that Jesus probably have used today's parable for his audience uh, to catch the reference to the second book of Chronicles, chapter 28. And the, sec uh, the second book of the Chronicles talk about how people of southern Judea were defeated by northern Israelites, how the people from Judah were taken captive to Samaria and shown mercy by the Samaritan leaders thanks to God's intervention and help. And let me first uh, the talk about the, the second book of Chronicles because the two texts share a lot of commonalities. As I mentioned earlier, there was a big uh, collision, a conflict between the Israelites and the Jude, and our Lord um, this just let the Judeans um, the defeat in the war, and they became the captives um, of the Israelites. And the captives uh, had to use the exactly same road that appeared in the chapter 10 of the book of Luke, which was the road to Jericho. So we find quite a lot of the setting, uh, the settings or the, the incidents of the people's behavior were uh, the, the, the similar, the, um, the, they were quite similar. And what uh, we can find from the these two uh, the texts are very similar. First of all, um, the Jesus begins his parable by saying an unnamed Jewish man finds himself the victim of robbery. And let me uh, the compare that. Uh, I, let me compare the two stories. The injured uh, man 
of both uh, the two texts uh, larger correspond, and including the fact that, that they were severely injured and they were helpless. And there is a strong parallel in the way the victims were shown mercy. In the book of Luke, one Samaritan went up to the victim and bandaged his wounds and pouring olive oil and wine on them. In the Chronicles, it says uh, that the men were assigned to, the, uh, to take the prisoners and find clothes among the plunder for those who were naked. So they clothed them, supplied them with sandals, gave them food and drink, and provided them with olive to rub on their skin. They put uh, the ones who couldn't walk on donkeys. They brought them back to their brothers at Jericho, the city to date palm trees, and then returned to Samaria. So therefore, when Jesus told this uh, the parable, the original audience, who were the experts in the uh, the in the religious law, might have referred this story in the Old Testament. And then let's find out what really happened in the second book of uh, the Chronicles, uh, chapter twenty-eight. The Jerusalem uh, and southern Judah were invaded by the king of Syria, and many people were taken captive to Samaria. And to make matters worse, southern Judah was invaded by their northern brothers, and a countless number of people were either dead or enslaved. And the Bible describes the situation this way in the verse 5 to 8. It says, The, the Lord... Uh, he is um, the God handed him over to the king of Syria. The Syrians defeated him and deported many captives to Damascus. He was also handed over to the king of Israel, who thoroughly defeated him. The Israelites seized from their brothers 200,000 wives, sons, and daughters. They also carried off a huge amount of plunder and took it back to uh, Samaria. So we can't imagine that well a lot uh, of the a lot of the Judeans uh, were dead and then they became the captives um, of the Israelites. And then Odia uh, Odit, a prophet of the Lord, prophesied to the northern Israelites. And he said Judah committed sins against God, and because of this, uh, the Lord let Judah be attacked and defeated by Israel, and that was how Israel was able to win the battle. But the Israelites are slaughtering their own brothers and enslaved them, and he's saying that, Are you sure you, are, you have no sins? Said free the captives, if not, the woe will come to you. The Lord will be very angry at you. And upon hearing, uh, upon hearing this, the the four leaders the stopped the people who returned from the war with victory and set free the captives. And. The Bible says in the verse 12 and 13, it says, So some of the Ephraimites family leaders, the, uh, they confronted those returning from the battle, and they say to them, Don't bring those captives here. Are you planning on making us even more sinful and guilty before the Lord? Our guilt is already great, and the Lord is very angry at Israel. This was how the four of uh, the brave uh, the Sumerian leaders uh, the persuaded um, their people. So, after uh, the hearing uh, from their leaders, the soldiers relieved the captives and the plunder before the officials and the entire assembly. So the leader took care of the captives, sent them to Jericho, and then they were able to return to Samaria. So in the verse uh, the 15, it says that 
men were assigned to take the prisoners and find clothes among the plunder for those who were naked. So they clothed them, supplied them with sandals, gave them food and drinks, and provide them with oil and rubbed on their skins. And they put the ones who couldn't walk on donkeys. And then they brought them back to their brothers at Jericho, the city of date palm trees, and then uh, returned to Samaria. So we can say that the leaders uh, the, took care of the, the captives, and they were, uh, the, that was how the Judeans were able to return to the Samaria. And the expert of the law, who is well versed with this incident, might have instantly reminded himself of the story in the Old Testament. The Sumerians took their own people as captives, but when they were rebuked by the Lord, they set the people of Judah free, and they bandaged their wounds and allowed the severely injured ones to return home on donkeys. So that was what the story was about. And we can learn that the Sumerians uh, were uh, the Sumerians were uh, the good hearted. And Israelites, uh, to Israelites, the Samaritans were uh, not uh, the respected, and they were not uh, the considered as their people. And to be honest, it was not entirely the Israelites' fault because of the Assyria's policy, the people of northern Israel were scattered, and due to Assyria's the mixed race policy, their ethnic identity was uh, the mixed with those of others, and the people of Judea and Jerusalem um, were not considered uh, the Samaritans, uh, did not consider Samaritans as their kinship, as they were a mixed blood. So in short, they didn't see Samaritans as neighbors. But uh, through a parable, our Jesus is trying to remind the Israelites of an incident in the past when the Samaritans considered them as brothers, thus set them free from captivity. When Jesus asked uh, of the Samaritan, uh, he's not trying to come up with an extraordinary um, example, but rather remind the Israelites that the Samaritans were already neighbors to them. So now, since we get a glimpse of the background of the Jesus parable, then can we, tra uh, then can we trace who the victim of the robbery was? These are the people who were taken kept uh, who were taken captive in the book of Chronicles. In a word, the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Why were they taken captive? First of all, they lost the war. But the Bible gives us uh, the more um, the deeper reason. Uh, it was the uh, it was all because of their sins. It was uh, during the king uh, the Ahaz reign, and the king was not righteous before the Lord, and he has no faith in God. And the Bible uh, says that in the Verse 2 to 4, it says, They followed in the footsteps of the kings of Israel. He also made images of the Baals. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben Hinnom and passed his sons through the fire, a horrible sin practiced by the nations whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. He offered the sacrifices and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every, every green tree. 
Our Lord was very angry with King uh, the Ahaz state, and that was why our Lord no longer protected the Jews and allowed the foreigners and northern Israelites to invade and plunder their land and possessions. In the verse 5 to 6 of the book of Chronicles, chapter 28, it says, The Lord is God handed him over to the king of Syria. The Syrians defeated him and deported many captives to Damascus. He was also handed over to the king of Israel, who thoroughly defeated him. In one day, Pika, son of uh, the Rumalia, killed 120,000 warriors in Judah because they had abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors. So if you look at the Jewish parable again, with this historical event in mind, who is the man who fell into the hands of robbers? Uh, these are the people of Judah who pride themselves on being the people of God. Why did they encounter robbers? Uh, because of their sins. They were taken captive and taken away. And well, we can say maybe in one hand they had a reason uh, to be attacked. And that is what the book of Chronicles tells us. So they first abandoned our Lord, and that was why our God did not protect them from the war and left them to be captives. And the one being robbed deserves what had happened to him, and at least it seemed from the perspective of the Book of Chronicles, they deserve to be beaten. And we all like that. And... And I not like the victim of the robber who somehow deserve uh, to be beaten, who deserve all those unfortunate events. And that is because I abandoned our Lord. We committed sins and would deserve such unfortunate incidents as punishment. And our Lord um, could have just led us uh, the, to all this good path, good life path. He can perform all the miracles even if we commit wrongdoings. But He, our Lord, enable us uh, sometimes even allow us to to have all those unfortunate events because He, our Lord, wants us to know that it is our, uh, it is our own sin. It is our wrongdoing, and all those uh, the sins that we have committed, and because of that, we deserve such, all those unfortunate events. We cause them to happen, and our Lord wants us to remember that, and wants us to repent for what we have done, and. And then our for this event. Our Lord would like to remind the Israelites uh, of the Israelites of what they have received in the past and what they are doing uh, at uh, nowadays. So. The reason we encounter a robber is not because we were unlucky, and it is because of our of the scenes. So our our. God uh, the, wants us to to look back on ourselves, and even if we commit so many sins, our Lord, uh, even if so, He punishes us, and then He wants us to uh, repent. But in the end, He wants us to he enables us to return to our homeland. He restores us, He refreshes us, and He embraces us. So our Lord enabled uh, the captives to be free and from Samaritans and allowed them to return to their hometown. And that is a true grace of our Lord. And the key message to the parable of the Good Samaritan is a God's command for us to do the same. Our Lord doesn't uh, want us to, to see the incident from the perspective of a spectator. And 
There was a man who fell victim to the robber, a Levite, a priest who passed by, and a Samaritan、uh, helped him. And which of them do you think is a good person? You too、uh, live、um, the like a Samaritan. Uh, and this,、uh, the plain message is not all. It's not what.、Uh, it's not everything. What our Lord would like to tell us. Let's see from the perspective of the victim who fell into robbery. We are the ones、uh, who was beaten to death because of our own sins. And even if so, there was a Samaritan who helped us、uh, through the difficult situation. Our Lord. Would like to think about、um, the what why we are encountering the unfortunate events, and when we face all those in,、uh, unfortunate events, our Lord、uh, would like to think about all those helping hands, the people who approached us to help, and. When in times of difficulties, uh, we, uh, and or in our human relationship, uh, there are times that we help others, but at the same time we get the help from others. But in many times, we oftentimes、uh, think about、um, the ones that we helped instead of those who、uh, reached out to us to give us help. But our Lord wants us to the, remind ourselves of those helping hands who were willing to help us in during our difficult times. So, and the thanks to their、uh, helping hands, were we able to come so far? Were we able to overcome the difficult situation in the past? And our Lord、uh, wants us to、uh, just think about those people. So. And our Lord, so our Lord with us to、uh, the remember that、um, when others are in a difficult situation, we have to have just a strong determination to approach them, uh, to uh, approach them and then help them. It not because um, not because we are、uh, not just because we want to help them, but because we need to repay what we have received from others in the past. And. Now let's、uh, remind ourselves of our own、uh, the Korean history. This year marks the one hundred fifth of the anniversary of the Independence Movement Day, and our ancestors were all out in the on the road and、uh, shout out for the Independence Movement. And、uh, th thanks to our ancestors, and、uh, thanks to all those、um, the helping hands from our neighboring countries, our allies, and the all those.、Uh, The people,、um, we were we able to,、uh, to have the liberation in the Korean Peninsula, and after all those、um, the colonial,、uh, after we were set free from this colonial power, we were destitute. We were in a very difficult situation, but there were so many people, uh, uh, so many people who were who. Reached out to us and to provide us with helping hands, and were we able to come so far and become a very strong and proper prosperous nation as we are having nowadays, and、uh, now, and when we look at our neighbors, there are so many countries or there are so many people in this world who are in a difficult situation, who are who need the helping hands. So, when we reach out to them, we、uh, let's not just、uh, the approach them with good hearts. Let us remember that it is time for us to repay what we have received in the past, and let's all have an open heart and reach out to those people. In needs, let's all live like the good Samaritan and to repay what we have received in the past. Let us pray. 
Lord, we remember Jesus, who, like the Good Samaritan, came to help us who fail, who fall victim to robbery. You healed us and saved us. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and grace. Lord, you suffered from the weepings and was crucified on our behalf. Lord, we thank you. We have received so much from you. Lord, please enable us to live in full gratitude. Lord, who saved sinners like us, please enable us to Remember those who have reached out their helping hands to us when we were destitute and under plight. Lord, please enable us to remember our neighboring, uh, the neighbors, our allies, friends, and relatives, all those who came to help us. Lord, we believe that there is eternal life prepared by the Lord on the very path we take. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.